today I want to show you guys how I feed my plants. Hello world, how's it going? I hope you guys are all doing great. And if not, as always, I hope that tomorrow gets better for you. Tomorrow's always a new day. Keep that in mind. Think good thoughts and be your own creator. Now, I've got a bunch of dry furts in and I wanted to share with you guys. This is what I use to fertilize and feed my fish room and it's the most cost effective way for me to do it since I have so many planted tanks. Let's go through all these different furts real quick. So here's all the fertilizer I got. It's all dry furts. Each bag is a pound. So I've got quite a bit. This should last me quite a while. I've got some GH boosters. I haven't really messed with this and don't usually mess with this. This is something new I'm going to try since I'm doing softer water. And instead of like salty bee and stuff like that, I want to see if this works good for my caradenias. So we'll play with that a little bit, see what goes on phosphate now i don't use a lot of this this is like an extra additive this is kind of like steroids for your plants it can cause algae a lot because well it's phosphate phosphorus it's what people use for fertilizers in the yard and stuff like that and as well as you don't use very much of this like it takes very little amount for a tank for this so this will last me a long time then these are my micros. These are my trace elements. Plantex CSM plus B. Now they got a Miller mix. I'm not familiar with it. I've always just used this as my trace minerals for like magnesium, boron, uh, calcium, all kinds of just trace minerals. Does have copper in it. I've used it for my shrimp tanks and I never really had any issue with it, but I also dose lightly. Then here we have, oh I got two of these monopotassiums phosphates. I'm not really sure if I even ordered those, I almost wonder if he threw those in since I ordered so much. Nilo CG, he's a real good guy, like I actually bought two different orders and he refunded me for the shipping. Without me even saying anything, I was just going to pay it just because time's always in a crunch. I didn't have time to mess with it. Let's see, this is all I'd order. And then just this one. Move that down here. This here, okay. And then here's all my macros. And I've got a lot of my macros because this is what I dose the most of. And what I use for my macros, which is mostly potassium, is potassium nitrate and potassium sulfate. So I'm going to use the potassium nitrate in my neocaridinia tanks a little more. And if there's not a big fish load, I'll use the nitrate. But if there's a heavier load, I use more of the sulfate. That way there's not a problem with too many nitrates in a community tank and as far as dosing all this stuff i use a ei method which these are what i use i keep them in the container here and i have like an estimate for my dosing which i just use spoons i'm still working on this i need to get more measuring spoons for each one just so it's nice and easy to do i formulated these myself He's got some on his website and it shows that. I'm going to show that to you guys as well. Kind of give you guys an understanding. So really my philosophy as long as there's some in there. Something in there whether it be the right amount or whatever. It's better to have a little than not enough. And it's, some, it's not really good to have too much. So it's always good. I always do light dosing. Especially with as many tanks as I have, I don't want to grow plants that quickly. And I also, when I'm dosing it, I think of bio loads as well. So the first thing I do is I use Carbon Excel for my tanks to get the carbon in there since I don't run any CO2. 
Now I'm just starting this regimen. I'm already seeing nice new growth. Algae's starting to kick back since it's been a while since I've done it. But I got it in a squirt bottle, kind of like a boxer would have. And I just go through, bam, throw a little bit in. I'm not looking for a lot. So, of course, bigger tanks, like say 125, I'll go shh, 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 and hit all three of those. You can see I'm getting a little algae on the front glass, but nice new growth. This tank actually hasn't had a water change for about three weeks, hence the algae growth on the tank. If I was doing my water changes, that wouldn't grow so bad. And to keep this from evaporating, some of you guys mentioned actually mentioned this to me. A few of you guys did uh, use an electrical nut to screw this on here, and that'll keep the evaporation from getting out. Because if you don't, it'll actually bubble, burp back out, and you'll end up losing most of your stuff. And be careful with this stuff. Don't get it on your skin. If you do, wipe it off sooner than later you'll know too because it'll burn a little bit but it is fish safe so don't worry about that part and since i have so many tanks i actually make a solution because it's really hard for me to do the dry ferts and all my tanks add so much time like an hour or so extra each day which is really hard to do when you manage this many tanks by yourself i got one for potassium and i got one for my iron so that's my macros and my micros which is not just iron it's the csm plus b i just call it iron so what I'll, i've been kind of messing around with the ratios as far as the solutions go but i'll show you how to you can do that and some on nilo cg's website that's where i got these from it helps to boil the water and then put the potassium or the csm plus b in hotter water now I'll mix it in a different container because you don't want to melt the plastic either. But that's how I have to do it since I have so many tanks. But I'll go ahead and show you guys how I would do it if I didn't have so many tanks. And this is what the algae looks like when it's dying away. If you look at the top of it, you can see how it's browning a lot. So this stuff's a little greener. That's browning. It's getting thinner. It's not as thick. And this is starting to get thinner as well starting to brown and it's easy to get that out with a siphon but you can tell the ferts are doing their job so now that they're getting the plants are getting fed they're competing more for the nutrients than the algae is now i do dose all my tanks even my fried tanks and my breeding tanks so for instance this is my breeding group of cpd and see how you only got a few plants here and over there what I'll do is I'll try to target the plant and dose it right where the plant is. Like so for this one just like here I would dose all the way through it so I wouldn't have to be as targeted. Here I'd target there and I would target there and there. Then say this one actually doesn't have any plants elsewhere besides the cup that it breeds in. Well, there's a little one back on that rock. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it in the corner. I don't really want to get it in the cup I'm breeding in. Because that's where all the eggs and everything are. And that will get into the water column anyway. It's especially with the root feeders. With the root feeders having a more direct approach, sand doesn't absorb it as well. But you get something like Eco Complete, and it'll just keep the potassium in it. Some will get to the water column. The root feeders really love it. And something like a tank like this, well, I would just dose it all over it since the tank's everywhere. But I would still try to target like at least one scoop on that, at least one scoop on that, at least one scoop on that, and so forth. Also on the note of biomasses, when I have only got so many small plants on here, not really fast growers, I don't have to, you don't want to fertilize them as much as you would a moss or something or guppy grass that would eat it real fast and hide up. Like this high biomass, this biomass can probably handle a lot more ferts than that little tank could. 
So you gotta feed the biomass of plants accordingly. To size. Now here's Nyla CG's website. Oh, got a little pop up here. That's actually for a site where you can get extra percents off. I got 10% off last time. It was kind of nice. And as you can see, the prices aren't too bad. He doesn't even know I'm making this video. I, I wanted to show you guys since this is what I pretty much use. And he's got great dosing instructions. And he's just a good guy and he do good business. Here it tells you more about it in this section. The EI dosing. Same thing with the teaspoons. Kind of like what I do. Which actually, his dosing looks a lot like what I do as far as the eighth keeping it smaller so I think the original like the Rex Grig formulas those were more for really high-tech tanks because that's when I was back doing more high-tech tanks and I had time to deal with high tank high-tech tanks and it has targeted concentration levels a uh, solutions you can make and kind of the formulas for that and it's got lots of info, so if you guys got any more questions, this is a good thing to look for formulas and trying to figure out your own EI method that you want to do for your tank and its biomass. And you can go to his website and get this information, or you can just pause the video or whatnot. Now that you guys saw Nilo CG's formulas, I'm going to show you how I do it. Since I go with light dosing, these aren't really high-tech tanks. There's pretty much low light on most of them, low to medium. So it's all about balance as well. So what I have here, these are numbers that I've had. If you look here from nitrate and all this, this is actually what I got from Rex Grig. If any of you guys know who Rex Grig is, He's kind of old school back in the day. He's not in the game anymore doing FERDs and regulators and CO2 like he used to. But I used to get my stuff from him. But big shout out to Nilo CG Aquatics covering the dry FERDs for most of the hobby now these days. And he's been doing it a long time. Great guy. Answers questions if you have them. He's very helpful. So as far as this, I've got it formulated to a quarter teaspoon is 1.9 grams which you want about 2.8 grams for a 20 gallon that would be more for a high-tech tank I would say this would be good for medium and I'm actually only doing half of this I like to do for 20 gallons since most of my tanks are 20 gallons and if you got a 10 gallon you can just half the spoon I've actually got half the spoon here this is a 1 8 and I've been dosing this as if it was 20 gallons. So I'm going really, really light. I'm almost really using a quarter of like the original amount by the time you divide it all up. But it's been working, it's been helping. And I may increase it since I'm fertilizing all of my tanks that are everywhere. It takes me more time, so it's harder for me to actually try to do specific tanks only with certain first. But I may do that later down the road. I just want to bounce everything back now as soon as I can. And my biggest issue with that, trying to bounce it all back, is just being consistent, taking the time. For starting off my schedule or week for fertilizers, I'll go ahead and do the carbon and potassium sulfite or potassium nitrate and the next day i will just do carbon and then say wednesday i would do the micros and the trace minerals and carbon then the day after that i would just do carbon and then the day after that i would go back to the potassium so I, I've been skipping a day as far as the dry furts in there and just giving it a day of carbon. Since I have a lot of minerals in my water, it builds up. So I'm trying to deplete any excess of any of these materials that may be in there. And I'm pretty sure there's a high excess of 
iron and everything else that's still in my water especially those eco complete tanks and it it causes an imbalance but as soon as that changes i'll probably change up the formula as well maybe start doing more daily dosing and maybe go back to this amount and say if i got high tank tanks i could go to that amount or whatever i like to keep it lower because just as long as it's in there it's good it's better to have you don't want to go too much really like i mentioned and if you miss target a plant you can also not feel so bad about adding a little more in as time goes the plants will grow as well so that will factor into the amount you dose as well so that's a big reason why i'm kind of dosing light and another reason why you would go heavier all right so i hope i targeted most of your guys's questions and made this as informative as possible and that you guys learned something if you still have questions hit me down in the comments below i'll answer them let me know and till next time in the next episode peace world